So I've been uh, spending quite a few hours planning the avionics for the Bearhawk, uh, which is quite a fun part of the project, as you can imagine. Um, and it's one that requires a lot of planning um, for a number of reasons. There's a lot of integrated systems that go into it, and you don't really get uh, want to get them wrong. There's uh, quite an expense associated with it as well. But fortunately, uh, the main companies out there have got a lot of online tools to help you. I've decided to go with uh, Dynon, and uh, that's been very good. So Dynon uh, own advanced uh, flight systems, and actually I'm dealing directly with advanced flight systems with Jonathan there in the workshop. And uh, they've got what they call a uh, panel builder and a panelless builder. So I've gone with a panelless one. The reason I've done that, I've actually got my panel uh, that comes as part of the Bearhawk kit set. That's, that's it in the corner there. It's already cut, fit, all the nut plates attached and everything. And it's right ready to uh, mount into place where I've got the mock-up panel sitting there. So by going with uh, advanced flight systems, then what I'm able to do is purchase all the uh, equipment off the shelf. So what a, uh, in a nutshell, I'm going with uh, two of the Skyview HDX units that you can see, basically a, a PFD or a primary flight dis display, and the other one will be a, uh, a multifunction display. In, in practice, uh, both of them can be swapped around and configured how, however you like. We'll just give you a closer look at it. Now I have made a few changes. This was an original mock-up that I did, but I, I have changed a few things. So. A couple of the main elements, the two Skyview uh, HDX screens there, they're about 10.3 inches uh, from memory. And the other main feature here, nothing to do with avionics, but still very important, is your air vents. So I've made a decision early on to put the air vents there, and that largely dictates um, the space and how it will be configured in those corners and the reason for that is I've got knacker ducts on the boot cowls uh, when they're fitted right under the panel there. Something else that's quite notable with the panel, um, one of the other Bearhawk builders and uh, several in fact have actually put in hinged instrument panels and I'm doing the same thing. My instrument panel is already uh, built, it's already hinged and it folds forward and I've decided to have it so that when the control sticks are, are tilted just under the panel that uh, the instrument panel can flip forward 90 degrees. Now in order to do that there are a couple of issues. The big one being I think once you've got your throttle mixture pitch and cowl flap levers installed it's going to be very difficult to flip the panel forward. So I'm anticipating having a cutout here where those items stay permanently fixed in place the rest of the panel folds forward over it. I've also made a removable panel up the top here and that all works very well. The framework's all built, it, but, but it all comes apart and that's a great thing about it. I don't think that uh, I'll need to access this area a lot after it's, after it's finished being built. However, if I do, it's a very simple case of removing the screws and folding it forward. <clears throat> so what I've done here, um, the actual avionics components, you've got the HDX screens, I'm going with a Dynon radio. Now, Dynon only make a two-place intercom. So because of that, they've recommended um, a PS Engineering uh, intercom, which is called a PM3000. That's a four-place intercom, and uh, that caters for the passengers. So how this all works is Dynon uh, take all these components, they hook them all up together. They're making a couple, a couple of custom wiring looms for me. And the main one is for the switches, and I've actually changed it since I mocked up this panel. Uh, the same with the ignition. On, my, um, on the engine, the electronic ignition that I've gone with is uh, the EMAGs or PMAGs, as you, you might know them, for the six-cylinder engine. I've actually received them, believe it or not, and I'll probably uh, give you a look in another video. So those uh, EMAG um, ignition systems require a test switch. So I was faced with the decision, do I install a couple of additional switches on the panel? And the answer to that before I even start is a very clear no. There are no extra switches going on this panel. There's a pet peeve of mine is having cluttered aircraft panels and I'm simplifying this as much as possible. So what we've come up with is um, for each uh, ignition, uh, you're gonna have a toggle switch which has an off and on and a test position, spring-loaded to the on, and uh, you have to go through a gate to turn it off. That takes care of everything. Most likely they'll probably sit just up here. There's simple two switches and a starter button. That leaves us with another panel for the master switch. So 
What I've narrowed it down to after a lot of thought and a lot of discussion with friends and, uh, and a lot of other chaps online is I'm having a master, an alternator, an avionics, a fuel pump switch and a light switch and that's it. Nothing else. Nothing. So um, uh, Advanced Flight Systems are building that into a custom panel for me. It's very small. It's got the required switches and nothing else. Now, maybe I shot my foot off there. I'm not really sure. I'll find out and in a couple of years. Um, perhaps I've added something else that needs another switch. I'll deal with that when I come to it. I'm not having any strobes, no rotating beacon, no wingtip lights. Um, the aircraft is going to be painted a bright colour. That should be enough to stop people in their tracks. I do realise that flying on low vis days, the colour of the aircraft doesn't make any difference. If it turns out to be an issue, I will configure something like a strobe light later on um, and have it hardwired somewhere so that when the aircraft is running, the strobe is always going. Something like that. I'm, I'm not too sure. But my plan at this stage is not to have any other lights, just a landing light on the front, um, and that's, that's so that other people can see me um, operating around airfields. <coughs> so that's the general uh, description of it. Advanced systems are quite a way through making it up. All the harnesses are largely, well, largely most of the harnesses are off the shelf products. And you can buy them in different lengths. There are a couple that they are making custom made for me. Um, what they tend to do is they'll, they'll have the harness with a, with a plug fitting on one end and they'll leave the other end off. They made a suggestion for me. Um, there is one set of wires that has to go through the wing route and out to the magnetometer at the wingtip. So they, they suggested, why don't we put um, a, ma a male fit to female um, plug in there that switches um, the male to female fitting over? And what that enables me to do effectively is unplug it at the wingtip. I really like that idea. I don't plan on ever having to use it, but if a situation ever occurs where I need to take the wings off, there will be a plug in the wingtip. So... There's quite a lot of reading up and researching online involved when you plan a system like this, and I had to get my head around um, transponders, ADS-B, all that kind of thing. And even though I've used them um, every, every day for years and years, there was still an awful lot of reading uh, to be done. One thing I've done um, is made a decision about the aerial location. I did mount this panel up here, and I'm going to leave it here. It's a solid wee panel and originally it was designed for the GPS uh, antenna. However, after talking to some uh, people online, I've discovered that people are having a lot of success mounting aerials on the trim strip between the skylight and the wings. It also acts as, uh, the, the, the wings themselves act as a very good ground plane. So that there, that then enables me to run the coax up the front window pillar here, along the wing route, and uh, the magnetometer wiring will carry on out through the wing, and the, uh, the two aerials for the VHF and the uh, GPS, um, I may need to split them and run them on separate sides to keep them uh, the required distance apart, but they'll simply sit up here on the trim. The ELT, if you have a look across the other side, you can just see the plug hanging down there. I'm going to, going to mount the ELT in the wing route, on the opposite side from the pilot in command. So it's in full view. I can see it, I can turn it on or off if I, if I need to, or in, um, I should say into the arm position. And uh, yeah, it's easy to reach, it's in full view, but more importantly, it's not on the main instrument panel. <laughs> You're probably, probably starting to realize by now I hate cluttered flight decks. Really, really hate cluttered flight decks. Um, so this one is gonna be very, very simple, and hopefully it all works. So I'll do another video on the avionics. Um, maybe in a, a month or six weeks, once I've got it and uh, once I've installed it, and we'll, we'll see how it uh, all works out. So just before I go, in the back of the boot cowl here, there's a lot of uh, vacant real estate up above your, uh, the, the pilot's legs. I need to mount uh, avionics racks in there. I was going to do it now. I'm going to hold off until the avionics actually arrive and I don't think it'll be a big deal, but I want to keep the weight down. And one decision I've made also after speaking to some other Bearhawk builders, I, I do have a lightweight battery and uh, I've decided to mount it after the firewall, after a lot of discussion. Originally I was going to mount it on the engine side of the firewall, but there is a problem these days with the lithium batteries is they can overheat. 
particularly after shutdown. And the reason for that is that you turn the engine off and suddenly there's no cooling airflow through the engine compartment and it can increase the, uh, the temperature significantly within a minute or two and cook your battery. By keeping it in the passenger cabin, yeah, it, it is a bit of a trade-off. It's not without its risks, but I think on balance it will be a lot lower risk. That's the plan, so I'll update it in uh, maybe four to six weeks and we'll see how it all pans out. Take care.